I'm James Shust, and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. With me today is Tanya Collins, a children's rights activist, and Jason Quintero, the chairman out of Solano County Libertarian Party. So, Jason, let's talk about quickly about uh, the governor recall issues. We're, there's a couple different, couple different movements here to recall Governor Newsom. Um, do you have any information about that? And is that actually the right thing to do? I think it's absolutely the right thing to do if uh, we have a governor that does too much crazy crap and just tearing this uh, state apart. I think the people need to step up and ask for a recall. We'll see if it goes through. But I can tell you this, that the Libertarian Party of California Executive Committee has endorsed uh, backing one of the recall efforts. So mm -hmm. this is fairly new information. This happened just a couple days ago. So the, the only political party, not Democrats, Republicans, but the Libertarian Party has endorsed backing his recall. Wow. Tom, yeah. you got any? You know, um, I'm, I'm for it just so long as uh, we can um, be very, very organized, boots on the ground. We need to make for sure that everybody is doing their piece of the puzzle because that could, um, recalls are a little, you know, uh, I don't know, they're scary. They're scary because it could, it could go either way. You're, you're recalling this person and then all of a sudden they're able to raise enough funds to beat you and then do you have another person to step in if it goes through? You know, there's just a lot of what ifs with recalls. So yeah, yeah. just so long as there's boots on the ground and they're organized, I, I'm full I'm full steam ahead with getting this guy out. Yeah, it's, you can end up with another uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger situation where you end up right. with, you know, replace a corrupt guy with an incompetent guy. And, you know, <laughs> no, right. I don't know what's worse. <laughs> right. I don't know. <laughs> you know, and, but, you know, for, for me, so this is a question, are we the wrong focus? Are we focusing on Governor Newsom when he's not the one, that, you know, he's signing the bills, this is true, but there's the whole legislature is the oh. one sending them to him. Yes. And so, you know, maybe our focus should be more on, on you know, the getting legislature them getting yes, them out rather than, sure. than focusing on, on a recall effort. It's, yeah, I think the people should focus as local as possible. If your community has a horrible politician, you need to do something to vote them out. You need to do that job. You can't focus on the governor. Right. You know, I mean, you can, but focus on your locals too. Definitely. Don't let them get away. Yeah. No, because that, they're just, that's the next step for them. Just keep going up. Right. Keep going up. No, we need to cut it off. The source. Mm -hmm. Cut it off. <laughs> yes. So essentially, we've, we're asking Governor Newsom to be the brake check on, on the legislature, which we've essentially given them a supermajority of. So I mean, is we're kind of you're, is is Newsom being put in this in this in the actually are we actually asking Governor too much of a governor to actually you know you've got to be the brake on your own party. I mean, Jerry Brown managed to do it, which is kind of odd that we're sitting here saying Jerry Brown was well, the he reasonable didn't do it person on a lot of, of the, things. But yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but Jerry Brown is actually now seems reasonable. It was, oh, it was, completely. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, which right. is Governor Moonbeam seems reasonable. It's kind of bizarre. We're living in bizarro well, land these days. Well, he did date days. Linda Ronstadt, so. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. We're just learning things left and right over here no today. Uh, <laughs> well, Governor Newsom, he is the uh, de facto leader of the Democrat Party. I mean, I don't know who their leader is, but he's the governor. He's the leader here in California. So he can't step up and say, no, this is crazy. Don't put this bill forward. Or not, or just let it go. But he, you know, I when you're at that high, you have a responsibility to just say something, step up. You're in charge, man, or you're a leader. So yeah, do I don't, I don't, I think he's too passive for that. I, I agree. He's very passive. I agree. He, he puts his finger, licks his finger, puts it in the air, whichever way the wind blows mm -hmm. is where he goes. Mm -hmm. Because I know he's shooting to be president. Right. I know he is. I think his wife also wears the pants in the house, and not a problem with that. No, I mean, but but no, I know what I'm you're saying. saying. She, you know, I'm sure she sways a lot of his. My wife you know. does too. So. <laughs> so I do too. <laughs> I don't wear pants in my family. Wow, good for you guilt. <laughs> Just say I don't get them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Madam Secretary tells me every thing what to wear. Um, so, well, let's move on to some that we all this PG&E power shut down. All the power was out. I know you guys, some of you in Solano County, actually had your power shut off. Those of us in Sacramento, we had we smud somehow the power can get here, but not anyway. Yeah. The, the whole logistics of California power. So, is it an awful mess? Was PG going to lose? Because we've got if they shut the power down, everybody's all mad at them. 
But now because the, all the consequences of the shutdown, everybody's all mad at them. So, right. you know, and if they had not shut the power down and there was a fire, everybody would have been all mad at them and blamed. So could, was there literally nothing pg e could have done? No win situation for them. I mean, if they would have done a little bit, spent a little bit of money and done some good maintenance 10, 20, five years ago, that would have helped. Right. Uh, instead of paying their politicians mm -hmm. who they wanted to get into and office their CEOs. To give them the and their CEOs. Yeah. And, right. And the executives, yeah. They had a choice. They chose to pay out big bucks to politicians and executives. Mm -hmm. um, but now, but I mean, last week or a few days ago, whenever this happened, they had no choice. They, they, it was a no-win situation for them. If there was a fire, they would be sued again. But then somebody died. Uh, you know what I mean? Right, so, right. like, what is his life not... I, I right. Just, no, it's, it's absolutely... You know, there's a no-win situation there. Right. Yeah. And it, you can actually argue that it is a situation of their own making, but mm -hmm. is it completely of their own making. The electrical system... In California is completely controlled by you know the the commission the legislature set up. Mm -hmm. It's the not the public the utilities, PUC, right? the PUC. Isn't there a special regulatory agency just for electricity? I I forget the exact the way it's actually set up, but there's a special uh, regulatory agency just for electricity. And when they re-regulated the the electricity uh, the electrical system, they forced PG&E to diversify. They diversify their power generation business and their transmission business. And so we're actually arguing about PG&E, the transmission company, not PG&E, the power generating company. Mm -hmm. And so what if PG&E, the transmission company, has done is sent a bunch of money back to the power generating company, but the regulations actually are kind of set up the, the way that this can actually happen. If PG&E was just a single company again, we would be holding a single company accountable. All the money would be in one spot. Mm -hmm. And so has the regulations actually created the problem? I believe so. I've, I've been hearing about the PUC. I don't have all the details on it, but I do understand it's this board that tells PG&E what they can and cannot do to an extent. Well, these are the regulations that you have to abide by. Again, people making policies for a private industry is not good. Mm -hmm. it, it, obviously, there, there's problems. But we also should look into the to the situation at hand where where you've completely removed you know uh, power to essentially how many how many thousands it was thousands right yeah, thousands was, of people it was hundred thousand or something. right it, it so i mean do we not have backup generators what i mean these are people's lives that we're talking about they mm -hmm. depend on their power they pay for their power and you just all of a sudden you're just going to up and cut it so at that point you should be like okay you know we're pg e we're going to make for sure that that doesn't happen again so via fix what needs to be fixed or i mean they have enough money from all of us and our fees go up every single year mm -hmm. fix what needs to be fixed throw out generators you know um it, it, nobody has to die because of this nobody fix fix your problems i know they're i know they're grand yeah but you know what your that's your job fix it is this going to require a kind of an unlibertarian, oops, unlibertarian solution to get to a thank you, <laughs> to get to a the, the libertarian solution? Are we going to actually have to use a heavy hand of government to get us to the point where we can allow these companies to operate in a free market solution? I hate this question because <laughs> oh, I want to say let the free market work, but I would like to see. Uh, God, would I see PG&E broken up and another and a competitor to come in? I don't know why there's not a competitor right. to PG&E. Right. Why isn't there one? I don't, I don't know, to be that. honest with you. Or why isn't SMUD allowed to compete with PG&E? Why uh, can't SMUD compete right. with West Sac? Are they not allowed to? I don't know right. that. Yeah. Well, the, in some areas, there are, there's restrictions. Well, um, and then we have politicians that are taking money from PG&E. Yeah. Yeah. You know, come on now. Well, and then you just got a bailout for the, to pay for all the fires. Right. Yeah, so our politicians right. are getting money from PG&E and then right. giving them more. Uh, yeah, it's, you know. And I really think yeah. that they manipulate the cause of certain fires. Oh, it was, it was this. It was this. You know, and they'll blame it on PG&E for, you know, having, uh, you know, da you know inf infrastructure that is not sound. And all of a sudden, oh, no, 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 I looked into it. Or we looked into it. No, it's this now. You know what I mean? My to guy wrote the report. Yeah, <laughs> My guy yeah. says. We, we policed ourselves. Right, right. Well, so. well is there, well, if, let's say if uh, uh, 
power line does start a fire. Now and then that fire grows out of control, but is it actually PG&E's responsibility for the fire growing out of control? Maybe the local authorities should have been able to get to the fire in time and it shouldn't have gotten out of control, but our disaster response systems are so out of, oh, are so unprepared that's another, yes. that, you know, that the, that that was the actual the cause of it exploding to a big fire or that our forests are so mismanaged that a small fire that should have just been a small fire becomes a big, huge fire. So, you know, is it, is it fair to blame PG&E for these big fires while, you know, or even a small person who was out mowing his lawn and hits a rock and sparks a fire, you know, it, he's not the one who left the forest or left the, the mismanaged, you know, so are we actually oversimplifying the actual problem? Right, now it's not just pg &E. there's a lot of factors working here. There's the PUC, there's the politicians, there's, there's negligence or um, irresponsible executives who are not getting their job done. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I don't just blame just pg and &E, because pg and &E is full of fantastic employees, hardworking men and women right. doing the best that they can. Right. And so I don't ever want to come down on pg and &E and act like the lion's men or, you know, the lady answered the phone is a bad person. Right. Because for the most part, we always have lights, right? Right. I'm very, th <laughs> I'm very thankful for what we have yes. right now. You know, but it's just, um, it's just bad decision making. And it's a lack of competition. Competition yes. makes everything better. And pg &E doesn't have any competitors that I know of. I don't I, not, I, no, not here in California. They're, they're not actually kind of allowed to anymore. I mean, the way the system's set up, you essentially can't. Have a competition. And, and that was the same with cable companies, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, there was no other competition. Come on, we need competition here, you know? Right, right. Well, that's like in for news channels, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, and now there's right. us. Right. So, you know, America's very fortunate that we're here today. Uh, definitely, <laughs> mm -hmm. I agree with you. That's right. Well, and now, another thing, if your power is out, apparently, because of the way the California regulations are set up and you have solar panels on your house, you can't charge your electric car. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I just heard about this recently, it was kind of funny. <laughs> this is kind of crazy, right? California regulations are so crazy. California's electric regulations are so crazy. You get solar panels in your car, unless you buy the big battery pack that can store yeah, the battery your- battery pack. Mm -hmm. right? The Tesla wall, yeah, or whatever the battery wall Or whatever yes. the battery parks are, you, yeah. your solar panels are essentially useless during a power outage. Yeah, it's, it, we've kind of created this bizarre system of yeah who makes these decisions regulations and rules and yeah. they want to control us and yeah i i just it's just funny i don't i don't have solar panels so I, I don't know the impact but i think it's kind of funny that um <laughs> we can't charge our car or a house with the solar panels because of some regulation who writes these regulations? It drives me nuts. <laughs> it goes back to the PUC. Well, I had somebody, we're, we're during this, we are talking about, she says, you know, I can fill my car up and drive 500 miles, you know, in, in 10 minutes. You know, fill my car up, it's got 500 miles in 10 minutes. And he says, well, a Tesla with an electric car, you can drive 250 miles. And so that's usually good enough. He says, yeah, but without your power outage, he says, yeah, but you got solar panels. No, you can't. Without your solar panels, you can't charge your Tesla. You're stuck. You gotta go to the right. mall. That's yeah. where they have but, all the... Yeah, but the mall doesn't have any power either. <laughs> oh, yeah. <they're> gonna... <laughs> so you're, you're literally stuck when yeah. I can carry, you know, a five-gallon can of gas and fill it up manually. I don't actually need power. Yeah. I can siphon True. gas if I really wanted to, if, you know, if you needed... <laughs> you could. If, you're, if you're in a desperate situation. <laughs> don't, don't come to my house. Well, speak... <laughs> so. Speaking of desperate situations, this, one, this, this topic we're not going to be able to laugh at. There's been two police shootings of people in their windows recently. Oh, God. We've got... Yeah. You know, this one late uh, officer in Texas killed this black woman. She was in her office. She was called in for a welfare check, and her door was open. For some reason, the cop went around the back, and she had her. She, she may or may not have had her shotgun on her, which, of course, she's in her house and hearing noises in the back. And the cop just shot her. And then mm -hmm. there's another case where a, there had been a, a call earlier in the day, a disturbance call earlier in the day, been taken care of. And for some reason, the cop came back later, and someone was knocking on the door, the guy went to reach for his gun because he thought it was the person who had been there earlier causing disturbance and the cop saw it through the window and again shot the guy through the window in his back. So you're not even, didn't even, the guy wasn't even facing him, he was facing the other way. So it wasn't, you can't even say it's a danger. So are we all in danger? I know we all think minorities are in danger from the police, but that second guy was a, was a white guy, I believe. So are we all in danger from, oh. these, from these police behavior? Yes, definitely. Um, I also think car chases were in danger. Um, put a helicopter up, let them do the job, find them later on down the road. 
but uh, to jeopardize other people and other cars is just insanity to me. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think um, I have a personal experience. My son's friend um, was, uh, it was Miles Hall and he was shot, um, black, black kid, uh, grew up with my son, they were friends, and uh, he was shot in Walnut Creek this year. Um, he was having um, a schizophrenic episode. Mm -hmm. uh, the cops knew he was schizophrenic. The, the, you know, the family knows, the whole town, the whole court knows that he has episodes. My son was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Um, they have their episodes. So when you reach out to the police, you think, oh, they're here to help me, please. Just, just to calm him down or, or 5150 him, um, sedate him, something just to calm him down peacefully, right? But it didn't end up that way for Miles. And, um, and it's just very, very sad. And the police said, oh, no, it wasn't our fault. But, you know, he, Miles was having... Um, uh, one of those episodes and his his grandma was petrified and she had mm -hmm. called for help and they were like okay you know we're coming and I guess he had uh, uh, broke a window in the house he was you know just not himself he wasn't in jeopardy he wasn't trying to harm anybody he was just you know just out of it and he walked out of the house and he had this like pole or something in his hand and you know the cops are like come here come here and then all of a sudden He's like, okay, well, if you just want me to come here, you know, you could see the video if you just want, okay. And then, and then all of a sudden they're like, drop it, drop, you know, you can't talk to somebody that has schizophrenia like that. You can't give them the orders. You can't do anything like that. And he got really scared and he started darting off away around them. He was just trying to get around them and they just opened up fire. Like there's, there needs better education with, with these police officers, number one, about mental illness. And number two, like there, it's just the shootings are out of hand. They just all of a sudden they're scared. Oh, I'm bringing out a gun. Oh, 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 mm -hmm. you know. Right, and I, I, I agree. There needs to be much better training of these officers, and they're held to such a high standard. I, in no way, want to demonize police officers. I am they're very thankful for the, what they do. I hope to God if my son or daughter or, or myself is in a bad situation, they call 911. I hope the officers are there and can help them. I mean, I'm very thankful for what they do. But damn, man, you, you shoot somebody schizophrenic running away, I know. Or, or you shoot someone in their house? I know. You talk about the, the two recent, they shoot some in their house? Right. That's insane. And, and I want to know what the training was. You know, what was this person told? I don't know how long the officers were on the job what their training was. I don't know if you know that information, but it's just, um, it's scary. And, and, and I saw these videos, I saw these people getting shot in the house. Right, it could be anybody. And, and I know it could be me, mm -hmm. for sure. Right. Well, in my car or my house, if I get the wrong police officer yep. who gets a little crazy mm -hmm. or had a bad day. Bad day attitude. Right, and everyone has their bad days. Yeah, yeah. So we give them a lot of responsibility and I respect Respect what they do and honor what they do, but damn, you better be good at it. And the people in charge better do some good training. It's right. just scary all the way around. Right. I mean, do we need to rethink what we actually expect from our officers? Is is there a difference? Is there a difference between a peace officer and a police officer? And, and we've gone to the police officer, but maybe we should get back to peace officers, I where agree. where the first response isn't law enforcement, is to maintain peace, and that's actually a vastly different right. thing. Right? Maintaining the peace, using laws to maintain the peace of a neighborhood is actually a vastly different thing than enforcing laws. Enforcing right. laws is kind of a blind stick. You just right. enforce the law, you don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Using laws to maintain peace is actually a different thing. It requires, requires some thought and some foresight and some training, but it also requires us as a, as a society to sit down and figure out, okay, exactly what is it? Are police, is our police job to socially engineer or is it to just help people? You know, is or is, and you get another question is, you know, if officer safety is job one, can public safety be any higher than job two? Well, and then also <laughs> you have a lot of police officers that really don't know the laws. That really don't. Mm -hmm. and, and there's people on, you can YouTube them all day long going, uh, what am I being pulled over for? You know, or what law did I break? Or, and they, you know, they kind of fumble through it and they don't know what to say exactly. Well, what, did, what law did I break? 
you know, and they don't know. So there's a lot of, there, there needs to be a lot of education. And I think what they only get like six or nine months of it. Um, and it's uh, full on, you know, hardcore training. But they're, you know, as in regards to the peace aspect of it, yes, for sure, they need more of that training for sure. And a little more like uh, emotional, you know, attachment, like, um, you know, they just have no, it's, it's, I, I, no, I'm not saying, or... yeah, no empathy, no, um, they just, you know, it's kind of like the robots, you know, and I'm not saying that all of them are robots. I, I, you know, my cousin's a police officer and I love him dearly and he's fantastic at his job. But I think that, you know, there just needs more training with, you know, they need to be people like us, you know, they need to realize that if you say, hey, drop, drop whatever you have and you don't, and you're like, oh, well, what, what, your, your brain's going, well, what, and your hand's going. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, they didn't drop it fast enough. Shoot, 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 you know, so. Yeah. There's got to be something. Yeah, why are why are citizens be expected to respond like we're well trained? Right. <laughs> when we're well, not. Because my brain doesn't function. Yeah, yeah, I'm like. Well, I know I have several law enforcement officers in my family, and every single one of them are just outstanding guys. I mean, they're the nicest people. They'll, they'll risk their lives to save yours. And so, like I said, I don't want to demonize these guys, but I know that the training has to be there. It's responsibility of you know, from, from the top. The well, trainers well and then for sure mental illness training for sure that's another and i feel like that i i feel i don't want to put it, the responsibility on them maybe get a separate department um to come in and handle people with disabilities hey well we've gotten five calls from this house and this this child obviously has issues this you know young adult obviously has issues so let's bring in a different department and see if they can talk them down you know, well, we already have like police chaplains, right? Well, maybe maybe we could expand that. expand that service and change or train give the chaplain some more some more responsibility that type of thing where where the chaplain yeah. can go with the police officer and this kind of thing. And see and if I the think chaplain. They, I think they need extensive training on mental yeah. illness and everything because it's 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 definitely out there and it's getting more and more each day. So it, it clearly feels like it's getting worse whether it's mm -hmm. actually getting worse it's hard to know with the way statistics are and, and how we're better at collecting them now so but it feels like it's getting worse like the, there's a more disconnect between the police and those who they are policing and we have to figure out some way to solve that and it's not, these aren't easy answers right and i would like to look at the percentages you know because every time this happens and there, now there's body cam videos so every, when there's a video now it's a big deal whereas before i think it happened more before, oh, definitely. When, but there's no camera. There's, there's no, no way camera. to say anything. Right. No, you know. You oh, you're, really oh, you're know just a criminal. It. We're not going to right. listen to you, right? Right. You just well, you know. But then, if there are bad, if there are bad cops, uh, you know, because there, there are, there's, a, there's always bad apples in some sort of corporation or via mortgage or whatever, right? right? Then, then the the other ones should not have their back. Right, and I know the good law enforcement offers. Officers do not want these people in their department. Right. They do not want them backing them up or writing a report with them. They don't want them. So I know that to be true. Um, so let's get rid of the bad officers. It's easy to say, right? Yeah. But I understand, I guess, an uh, officer who shot somebody in, I think it was Fort Worth. I'm not mm -hmm. sure where it was. But he, he was charged with murder. Yeah, he's already been charged. He he's has been charged. charged. So they're taking it serious. They're doing something about that. Or we could talk about the lady who walked into the wrong apartment and shot the, her neighbor. She walked into his apartment and shot him. Well, she's been charged. She's been charged with murder. You know, so this, I think we're doing a good job as far as treating officers like just like any other people. We're doing a better job of that. They're not above the law. And I think police officers get that. They take on this enormous responsibility, but they also have to understand they're not above the law. And if you kill somebody, you're going to pay for it. Right. Well, let's move on to something. Oh, we've got a few minutes left. We'll move on to one more thing. Hong Kong, China, and the NBA. Oh, my God. With all the, you know, does the woke left have a credibility problem, and can we actually morally do business with China? <laughs> the woke left is a joke. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I mean, you get NBA players oh who are so ready guy. to attack America <laughs> and how horrible we are here in America. But when it comes to China and some money, man, they will let human rights go right out the door to make a buck. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just a joke. 
Yeah. And it's frustrating for yeah. me because I am a huge Golden State Warriors <laughs> fan. I was born in Berkeley, raised part time in Oakland, and I love it, right? Me too. But <laughs> I got like some of our, our superstars and our coach out there just trashing America because of China. No way, man. And LeBron <laughs> James, what a sellout. A sellout. <laughs> I didn't have anything on that. Uh, no, no comment on that one. <laughs> he like, pretty much said it all. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the whole... Well, there is a, one player, Eric Cantor. He's from a, a European. He's from Yugoslavia. What's no Yugoslavia, Turkey. I think it's Turkey. Yeah, from Turkey. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, Turkey. I think Turkey I know who you're talking about. He's... Yes, yeah, Turkey. He's the same from Turkey. He's gotten a run, long-running feud with the Turkish president. His family's <laughs> been oppressed. He's, he's been he's had threats against his life, and you know he's coming here into the NBA, and he's you know essentially blasted LeBron James for saying you don't understand what's really at stake, you know. And so there are NBA players out there who actually understand what's at stake that are taking any. Yeah, well, it, it's interesting. It's how they wouldn't dare against China. That's the that's actually the part that bothers me. You know, it's perfectly fine. You want to have your opinions and you want to express yourself. You go back to honorable people can can honorably disagree, mm -hmm. and that's kind of a stance I always have. But at this point, you're. You're telling us two different stories. You're telling me that you know America was all this bad stuff, and America has done bad things, and we should answer to it, and we should be open to, to mm -hmm. for, for the discussion. But you can't even discuss. You won't even discuss the the stuff that's going on in China. You won't even discuss the oppression in, of Hong Kong or Tiananmen Square, if you want to go back, or the or the re-education camps for Muslims. Or there's there's a right. whole laundry, the absolute laundry list of stuff that China has been involved in. And I'm just going how. All these woke companies, these companies who ran here, you know, promote how how social virtuous they are, you know, turn a blind eye to that. You know, it, we complain about Trump and the tariffs in China and how that's kind of the wrong way, economic way to, to go. But is Trump actually kind of right in that China is actually the enemy? They're, if they're imprisoning Muslims and put them into re-education camps, yeah, they're bad people. Mm -hmm. They're wrong. All right. And they also poison us with their products. Well, garbage, right? Garbage products with well, formaldehyde. So we should and stop buying it well, if we can. You know. Well, we did if get we our. Can, we right? did get something back. We sent all our trash back to them, so you know it kind of works back. <laughs> you know, all the recycling trash. We sent it all back that way, so yeah. they got their plastic back. And <laughs> <laughs> Take your plastic back. <laughs> so that's about it for today. Thank you for watching. Catch us on, Liber on Libertarian Ac on Public Access Channel 17. And again, love everybody. Bye-bye.